Okay, hi everyone, and nice to meet you. And thank you very much for the invitation to talk about something very interesting and very typical for us in pediatric orthopedics, that the use of uh, elastic nailing. And as already Dr. Petrov uh, explained a lot of technique, uh, probably I'm going to, to show a little bit less about the technique, so and more focuses on the clinical cases. Uh, my only conflict of interest for this presentation is the funded by double medical for this. So um, the development of this uh, presentation will be, uh, it's explained there, and um, we will have some time at the end for the discussion from the questions. Uh, it's very important to consider that the child's bone is more porous, so that makes the biomechanical uh, uh, sit for the situation of the bone are very uh, special. And that's because of the bone have more plasticity and elasticity. And we have to know, or we know that pediatric fractures heal faster than in adults. That's very important to consider. But it doesn't matter if uh, the patient is adult or a child, uh, what our goal is we, we expect a rapid restoration of the function. And what is especially in ESIN that we achieve that by uh, an optimal developmental of the periostal callus. Uh, and that is different what happens in adults with a rigid fixation where the artificial stiffness of the construct provide by provided by the device will help initially to restore the function. So in one side we have the rigid, in the other side we have the elastic fixation. Uh, uh, both had a special condition, uh, but for example here in the noodle pool float, you can see this not that uh, soft, but the uh, elastic principle is almost the same in, in the ESIN. So what do we have, uh, what we have as consideration, or special consideration for fluorescing techniques? I think one of the major advantages are it's a very simple implant. It's also a simple method and the instrument are also very simple. So we can uh, go fast with the uh, expertise with this instrument. And some of the principles that we applied and I uh, encourage you to learn principles, not uh, techniques, uh, as says Dr. Vincent Moska in his book, because the principle will guide you in, in every situation. And, and if you know how the, the forces act in a fracture site, you can understand how the uh, ESIN acts to keeping the reduction and maintaining it until the heel will uh, achieve. And this acts, you know, like the three point stabilization where the compression force and the slides, sliding force will neutralize by this reaction vector that produced by the scene inside the bone. And we got that when we understand that is also goes to the point that uh, we need two uh, nails for some special bonds. I'm going to talk about that later. And also it's important the very principle, as Dr. Petrov said, that one of the major key points in ESIN is to correct the, the correct bending of the, of the nail. So if you do it and you, I encourage you to take some time to to mark in, in fluoroscopy where, where will be the entry point, the end point, and the fracture site, and you will get a correct bending of the nail so the forces will be applied in a correct way in the site of the fracture. And we have to, to know that are not obvious the same, right? Uh, diaphysal and metaphysal fractures, and that is a very important consideration when decide the type of the technique with, with uh, for some metaphysial fracture, we can use also a same technique, but we have to consider some uh, specific 
technique key points for it. And as Dr. already said, uh, we have to take in mind which are the factors that are going to uh, leading us to a failure of the of the technique, and, and not um, said that it's a failure of the uh, technique. But I think in most of the cases, the failure is from the surgeon by not applying correct the technique or not taking the correct decision for every fracture. Uh, so if you maintain the basic the basic principle uh, and maintaining the advantages of the SIN technique, probably we can achieve a very big uh, stability for every fracture. So basically, basically, when we decide to fix a fracture in case of instability, failure of stability treatment, irreductibility, uh, when we see a risk of malunion, uh, when we can expect a new injury, for example, in pathological bones or in case of refracture, uh, for a specifically patient or situation when we need a, a quick recovery and other complications uh, such as uh, arterial damage. And in, in metaphysial, when we decide for a scene, uh, when we see an unstable fracture, when it's also irreductible, uh, a polytrauma cases, multisegmentally, or cases of or refractures. So now we are going to review some clinical cases and, and talk about the specific uh, key uh, techniques points. So in case of humerus, for example, uh, you have to consider that to achieve the correct three points um, system into the bone, we have to use two nails. That's very important. Um, and we can use in humerus either in a retro retrograde way or anterograde way. And for that, we can use the C or the S bending technique. And, and you, have, you have here to show, depending on the site of the fracture, it, it depends on if, if it's uh, distal, proximal, on, in the, or in the shaft of the humerus, we can apply different uh, ways to use the, the thing. For example, for some of you, if you see that case, probably you will think about a uh, conservative treatment. So you see the patient and you talk to her, okay, I'm going to put you in a cast, a hanging cast, very heavy, but uh, consider that you will have around four to six weeks with it. And probably that child won't be that happy after you, uh, told to her that. So if you consider this fracture and you manage in a, a surgical way with the SIN method, probably you will have a fully recovery and early recovery, no immobilization needed, um, fully recovery to, to normal activities very fast, and probably in that way we will have a uh, happier patient. Other, other situation in the mid shaft and the humerus, and probably in a nine or 10 years old patient, even in adult, you may consider treated a in a conservatively way, probably in a brace. Uh, but if you see the, that picture has an uh, immobilization with a cast, because it's a special situation, it's a polytrauma patient. She also has a uh, floating knee with a femoral and tibia shot fracture ipsilateral. So in a damage control situation, we put into an X fix on the lower limb and we live only with a maintaining cast the upper limb for until we wait that the brain and the edema is established and we have the permission from the pediatrics to go to the surgery again and we put and we immobilize everything with a SIN in a correct way, so the patient uh, recovery full range of moment very early, and um, it will be easier for managing on the uh, on the pediatric intensive care units. Another special situation is the elbow, as described by Dr. Meteso in 
to many years ago in his original publication, if we learn how to, to rotate the essin, put into a, a retro, retrograde way to uh, achieve the reduction of the uh, radial head, we can uh, maintain it. So not only use for uh, maintaining re the reduction, also use it for achieving the, the reduction. And uh, talking about forearm, we have to consider that uh, the interus membrane act, act as the uh, second vector to, uh, to act against the, um, the sliding force when the, the other bone is not fractured. But have said that if you have a second bone fractured that is not displaced, you always have to nail that second bone because the interus membrane cannot maintain the, the position or, or the force against the other uh, elastic nail when the other bone is fractured. So this is very important you to know that uh, always nail the both bones if they both are broken. And for the radius, you have the chance to nail it uh, always retrograde way, but for the ulna, we have the chance to do it uh, anterograde way or retrograde way. And you can see here in the picture, um, usually we learn at the beginning of the technique that the radius is more easier to nail it from a very lateral side, but nowadays, uh, we, we know we have to take care about the uh, nervous branch there. So now we are preferring the more dorsal, dorsal entry point of the radius, uh, taking care uh, on the Lister uh, process. And when, when we see these pictures, probably we are very comfort uh, about the, um, very uh, worried about the, uh, managing the pain of the patient. And I think for uh, such a fracture, also managing and, and making the child happier will be uh, for sure using a technique that allows the child to move uh, faster and without any immobilization, of course. This is also a good example, probably in a um, 10 years old boy you all will be agree to treat it a conservative way. So the colleague did it in that way and he seems to be very happy with the results. I say, okay, away, go, go to the normal life. But if we are more critically with the result, we can see that it's an um, residual angulation of 17 degrees. And we all know what will happen if the child will fall down again. And of course that happens about one and a half month after the, the, the visit to the, to the colleague. And we see now a refracture. And in that case, we prefer to use an ASIM technique, put it in a correct way and we achieve an uh, good healing and, and a correct uh, position without any uh, malunion. Consider this other situation, an isolated ulna fracture, and I encourage you to always look at the position of the radial head, and that is not an uh, isolated ulna fracture, that is an Amontella lesion, so we have to take that in mind to produce an, a correct alienation. And as you can see there in the fluoroscopy, only when correcting the position of the ulna and also the uh, recovering the length of the bone, we uh, recover the position of, the, we, we can achieve the reduction of the radial head uh, reduction. And other spe uh, another special condition for fracture to, that I invite you to have in mind is that uh, metacarpal fractures. Probably 
uh, we know that some situations are more difficult to maintain the, the reduction. For example, this is a third metacarpal bone fracture, a uh, more distal fracture, and the colleague put into an uh, ESIN method, and the patient was very happy about the, the fast recovery of the function. Also, we can use the technique for a fifth metacarpal fracture in the in diaphyseal and with also the same good result and, and recovery of the uh, alignment and very early function recovery. And beyond fractures, we, we have some condition where the patients are benefit with some uh, non-rigid systems, right? Such is the case of osteogenesis imperfecta. And for example, you can see a case here where uh, uh, we try to correct some malalignments due to uh, multiple fractures. And we use um, uh, osteotomy in the cora levels and try to stabilization. And probably if you see there, we have not used an elastic method or not that elastic at titanium. So we use um, stainless steel, like a Kirchner wires. And the thing here is the uh, uh, mechanism of stabilization is more rigid. So probably this, that can help in some cases, but you can see there on the humerus, only with uh, one um, elastic nail in, inside, the both forces were not um, neutralized in a correct way, and the patient starts to uh, having a uh, residual deformity. Probably the case will be will be benefited for a um, two nailed insertion. And another case to to consider in OI is uh, again a. Uh, uh, osteotomy for, for correction. The colleague was very satisfied of the result and the alignment, but in time uh, he starts seeing that it's a uh, non union, so he decides to put a uh, rigid method, such as a plate, for example, here. And you can see, oh, okay, a nice result, well alignment, and the, the healing was achieved. But in the time we can see how in the end part of the plate, the bone starts to broken. So always consider a special patients and, and where you can apply the, the technique. So as a take home message, I encourage you to know that the advantages of the ASIM method are mostly the early mobilization, no axis or, or, or prevention of axis disturbance prevention of new injuries, less hospitalization, early reinsertion, and also no immobilization needed. Obviously, uh, disadvantages of, it, of this system cost uh, more risk of infection, and of course, the, uh, the second time for the um, removal of the, of the implants. And I will take just a couple of minutes to show you. Uh, I, I have. I, I take the opportunity to show you. This is a new classification method that we uh, perform in, in in my fellowship in in Madrid with Dr. Martinez Caballero, and there is the reference. And I invite you to read it. It's a free article, and it not like the same as the GMFCS, but it's a method to classificate the patient in, based on the functional uh, ability and also an, another part of biosecal social um, determinants. And it's very uh, interesting, this classification, because it's more sensitive to changes after surgery in patients. So I, may, I invite you to, to review it. Thank you very much. And there are my uh, mail if you need any further comments or you wanted to, to know about more about the classification, I will be happy to, to have your, your comments. Thank you very much for your attention.